morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. How are we doing? If you want to stand on your feet, we are going to worship together. It's good to see you. Very warm welcome in the room and a very warm welcome if you're watching online. It's great to have you with us. We're here for one reason and one reason reason only, and that is to glorify the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He deserves our praise. And so we're going to give him some praise. In a time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark, you help us in. There is only one salvation. We believe. We believe. We believe.
he prays, the treasures to fade never enough. When you came along, we put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied.
we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out that look completely bleak and hopeless, that he is going to breathe life into things that look like dead bones and raise up armies. Yeah, Lord, we thank you that you are, you're the God of the impossible. 
Lord, when it looks like there's a sea in front of us, the enemies to the back, you part the seas. Lord, when it looks like things have stopped, Lord, you haven't finished yet. And Lord, I pray over anyone here who's just like feels at the end of it in some way and needs to know that you're still with them and you're still working and you're still doing something in their life, Lord God. We pray your blessing into all of those. And you should know that the only soil in which miracles grow is the soil of impossibility. You know, that's the truth. You want to see the hand of God working, you've got to have a tough situation that he breaks into. And I want to share a bit of a testimony on that. You know, this week, um, well, last week, we, we um, well, two weeks ago, the directors decided we were putting our office block on, on the market. And then we put it on the market, but it was barely on the market. And we've been offered. Yeah. Like, straight away, the full asking price. You know, and we're really, we're really stoked because we're like, okay, thank you, Lord. You're in this, you know, and, and you, you're with us. And so we're just praying that that all goes through um, well. But I want to encourage you, if you're in a place where you're like, I've been pushing against this wall, I've been battering this thing down, I'm banging on the brick wall and it doesn't seem to be shifting. You know, we want to pray for breakthrough this morning. And, and actually, as you're seeking God this week, like that you see breakthrough and you see him working and that Ezekiel thing of seeing dry bones but he sees an army you know and we want to proclaim that for you for us for what God's doing in your life right now amen grab a seat guys welcome by the way welcome to freedom welcome everyone who's with us online um, we just want to acknowledge, we're really grateful for you, and we hope you um, have had a great time of worship wherever you are, whether you're making a cup of tea or whether you're still in bed, welcome um, online. You are welcome here too. <clears throat> Guys, we, I, I want to raise something this morning. Um, you know, we've been talking about through flowology and how all the blessing that God has poured into our lives was always designed to flow out and impact those people around us, right? Has everyone got the through flowology thing? Like that, we, that's the way we've been talking, and it's, and it's displayed all the way through the flow of Scripture, where you see right from the garden at the beginning, um, right the way through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Isaiah, the prophets, into David, the king, and into Jesus, and then from Jesus into the church, that we carry the blessing of God in order for it to be a blessing. And um, one of the things that we do as a church is we create a space called Little Blessings, uh, believe it or not, uh, on a Monday morning. And there are a group of uh, ladies who, um, who run that space, and it's open to everyone around in the community, and they are inundated with people wanting to come. And the only thing we need now is to build our team and to make sure that we're in a position of strength to bring blessing. If you are free on a Monday morning and you want to be involved in that team, we would very much like to speak to you. And Serena, potentially Janine is around. Is Janine here today? No, she's not here today. So, but speak to Serena, speak to any of us as team. If you've got time that you'd like to give on Monday morning, that is actually a really amazing place where we can be a blessing to the community around us. So if you're on for it, okay, sign up for the team at Little Blessings. Uh, we had a chup date this week. Um, that's a church update. If you're not down with lingo, that's, I don't know what that is, but um, if you're not down with the lingo, we had a church update this week. And we said in it that we're welcoming um, a new youth worker um, within two weeks. So we just want to let you know that Samuel is on the way and uh, we're looking forward to him joining our team. And we're really expectant for what God's doing. It feels like a time for us as the church to get ready for what God's doing. Does anyone else sense that? Like to be prepared 
for what God's doing in the house. Um, and it's significant. And it's significant, and it's significantly important that we are prepared and ready to move with what God's calling us to do. So get ready to take the blessing that God's given you and to be a blessing. It's only going to get, it's only going to ramp up. And the opportunity to see people blessed in our community is only going to ramp up. So let's get excited about it and be ready to move with what God's doing. Um, you've, you've, if you were the youth in the house today, you are staying in this room today. Okay. Um, I know, I'm sorry, I'll stop now. If, if you are a young person, uh, you're staying in the room today. Today is Compassion Sunday. <laughs> you! <Woo! laughs> as, uh, as you gathered, it's a significant day. Um, where, we, where we bring some focus to the work that we as a church are doing alongside Compassion uh, specifically as well in Burkina, although compassion is much broader. So we're going to have a bit of time where we focus on that, and then Ben is going to come and speak to us. But we want to welcome Mike back into the house today. Welcome uh, and hello. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unleash Mike in a sec. He's going to get stuck in, but um, welcome back, mate. We, uh, we're glad to have you. Um, but before we do that, kids, it's your chance to go uh, out today and to focus with your leaders on who Jesus is. So we want to pray for you as you go. We want you to be blessed. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray your blessing on our children, on the leaders who give their time, their effort, their energy and preparation. And Lord, we pray for peace and blessing today in those times in Jesus' name. So go for it, kids. Maybe actually, while Mike's getting ready, if you're staying in here, if you take the opportunity to say hello to someone next to you, maybe welcome someone if you don't recognize them, good chance, good chance.
Kingdom Church. Do you know what? It's so, I want to come to your church. I, I kid you not, this is it. I want to be here. I want to come here because what you guys have got is just so off the scale. Um, thanks for your welcome today. I'm Mike. I'm from Compassion, Compassion UK, part of Compassion International. It's a privilege to be here today to hook up with Tim, meet Ben, and obviously the amazing hospitality of the DeGrushies. Um, but before we let the man go, I just wanted to give you, it's a highly expensive, I hasten to add, um, <laughs> gift from Compassion to Freedom Church. Uh, I just want you guys to know how much we appreciate you. Uh, you are changing changing dozens and dozens and dozens of lives. And we're going to be talking about that in a moment too, but just want you to give yourselves an applause for all that you're doing in the field of missions with compassion. Thank you, bro. Wow. Let me, um, what was it called? Re redemptive flowology or so, what was it called? You know you should all know, don't you? What's it, what's it called? I still can't hear that. What is it? Through, flow, through flowology. So I was, I was given a scripture. I had something else prepared, but I was given a scripture. I haven't got long to share, but I want this to flow with the theme of the house. Listen to what the Word of God says. You will be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every occasion. Isn't that cool? Let that sink in. You're going to be enriched you're going to be made rich, said the old version that I had, made rich in every way. Why? So you can be generous on every occasion. And then he goes on and he says this, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Isn't that beautiful? So let me, let me rephrase, let me paraphrase that. He gives us load of, loads of stuff so we can give that loads of stuff away to people who need it. And then God is glorified in that whole process and he gets the glory and he becomes famous. It's not a bad deal, is it? All right, let's say it again and here we go. You will, be, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Let me share just a moment or two about the situation that we're facing in this world today. Some of these statistics you'll know, some of them you won't. 9% of the planet live in extreme poverty. What is extreme poverty? Extreme poverty means you live on less than, this is according to the World Bank, less than $1.9 per day. In reality, and that's bringing up a family incidentally, the reality is that if you're in extreme poverty, you live normally on around 50 cents a day. So in order to survive, you beg. You do whatever you can. You gather fruit and try and sell it. You do whatever you can so that you can survive. If you're in extreme poverty, generally, well, not generally, you will. You'll live, more than likely, on a mud floor. You will have no medicine to speak of or marginal medicine. You'll have little to no schooling an education. If you're in extreme poverty, you don't have a toilet you can use. You Normally it's open defecation, if you understand the gracious way that I'm explaining that. Um, if you're in extreme poverty, you are on the edge of survival and continually facing extinction. Extreme poverty is a terrible thing. 9% of the planet live in extreme poverty. Not poverty... Poverty is better than extreme poverty. 20 children per minute die from preventable causes that are brought on by extreme poverty. I know that's a serious thing, and I know I'm bringing the temperature down a bit. But you know what? The first rule of leadership is define reality. This is the reality. While we're here today, people are suffering and they're dying because of extreme poverty. 350 million children currently are in extreme poverty. But into the mix of that, God is doing something incredible and powerful through the church. Compassion is a mechanism. It's the church that makes the difference. So how do we do that? We're going to see a video in a moment or two. Uh, we ask for sponsors for children. It costs you £28 a month to sponsor a child. 
And we have 14, actually 13, because one's already been snapped up, 13 children from your project that you focus on in this church. Now, if I can just put a plug in here, it's very unusual for us to get that amount of children at that project. So we It costs £28 a month, and for that £28 a month, what do we do? We ensure that child is loved, cared for, and protected. We uh, introduce them to Jesus. We're a thoroughly evangelical organization. We, they don't have to be Christians to be part of the program, but most of them will become Christians through it. And uh, we give them schooling. We get them into school. Schooling is the, is, the, is the practical mechanism of liberty and finding freedom for kids in extreme poverty. If we can educate them to the highest level that we can. I met a lady called Patience recently. Patience is the head, let me get this right, head of security in Uganda, compassion child. God's placing these kids in all kinds of strategic places. We give them food. Nutritious food is fundamental and key to health. We, we give them... Uh, we, 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 we ensure that they get uh, plenty of Jesus. So on Saturdays, they attend a project, and in that project, they're taught uh, the love of Christ. And we, we help them get free from the chains of extreme poverty. And uh, extreme poverty, Richmond Modera says it so well, it goes deeper, deeper. It's deeper than just food. It becomes a spiritual thing in your psyche. You are hopeless. You have nowhere to go. We break that through uh, through the church that our projects are based in. We're going to see a PowerPoint. Incidentally, by the way, uh, Burkina Faso, we're going to see a, a couple of videos. I've got to watch my time. But Burkina Faso, you need to be praying for Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is really going through it. You're probably aware of that. If you look at it on the, on the government website, it's everywhere is red, apart from the capital. There's like a little thumbnail of yellow, which is dodge, dodgy. The rest of it is like, don't go there. Um, there. There are terrible things happening in Burkina Faso, so we need to be praying for it. Amen? All right, let's see your statistics. Don't, you're allowed to get excited. Are they allowed to get excited, Tim? Is the church allowed to get excited? All right, I say that in church, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, and then they put these amazing statistics up there, and they, here we go then. Because of Freedom Church, more than 189,000 hours have been given for of you because of this church. Come on. double your efforts to send those letters. Those letters are so important. No guilt intended, seriously, but please do. Next one, please.
Come on, your youth group is bigger than you thought, isn't it? Next slide, please. Oh. I've, I've got a little... No, stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. Um, I, I, can, I, can I drop Ben in it? Ben, can you pray for the kids? Would you mind doing that? Um, c- just while Ben... I wasn't planning to do it this way, and I've got a video to show, so it'll come back to me in a moment or two. But please, can you prophesy... Do you believe in the power of prophecy? Pro- prophesying over the kids. Can you... As Ben leads us, let's pray for these kids. Yeah, Father... Lord, we're so thankful for every gift that one. That is on the screen right now. Lord, we pray for their protection. For their provision. Lord, most of all, we pray that you would reveal yourself to them. Lord, that there would be salvation, not in just some, but for all of those children and their families. Lord, that. Thank you folks you can take your seats thanks I'm nearly through let's see an update a little bit of an update from uh, from Burkina Faso first video please Bonjour, c'est par Je m'appelle Gedalia j'ai 7 ans et je suis au Burkina Faso to all sponsors uh, who have the children in Burkina Faso, I uh, send you greetings. In Burkina Faso, we have 352 church partners that we are working with. And we have 100,472 beneficiaries in the program. Many families were already facing difficulties to meet their daily needs, even before the pandemic. Last year, we had heavy winds in some places. They lost their crops, some lost their house. There is unrest in the western side and the northern side of the country. More than one million people are internally displaced. So when the pandemic arrived, it was really hard. Many caregivers have faced the loss of their job. With the support, we're able to sustain them with food packages, and then they receive funds to do the income generating activity. This funds help many families. Aminata is a mom to four children. When the pandemic rise and the markets were closed, her business dropped. She was desperate. Uh, the project stepped in when her child received food package. And beyond that, she received a financial support to resume her business. This year, Compassion has also provided fertilizers. Many beneficiaries were able to even double their usual crops. And that's amazing. It's helping them to be sustainable. It was really amazing when the project resumed in Burkina Faso. We have seen many joys in the face of our children because they were happy to come back in the project, to see the tutors, to see their mates, so that they can continue with the program. I'm very grateful that the church and Compassion has been there during those tough times to support, to innovate, to be creative and helping families to be really resilient and hopeful. Dear sponsors, we really love you and really appreciate what you are doing for children in Burkina Faso. We cannot forget about that. We pray that Lord will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. 
Merci beaucoup pour le soutien. Je suis content de fièvre de vous. Soyez forts et que Dieu vous bénisse. Je vous aime gros comme ça. can't help but get upset when I see that. See what a difference you're making? You're bringing hope. Hope. Redemptive giving. What you're doing is you're using what God's given you to transform lives that's giving glory to God. It's exactly in flow with the theme of the church. Just quickly before we see our last clip, it's just a few testimonies that I thought might be helpful for you. Um, just before we do that. I just want to let you know that we've just passed the 2.2 million mark. 2.2 million children are currently sponsored through Compassion. 2.2 million. I, I'm a revivalist by nature and I've studied it a fair bit in other things that I do. Let me tell you, two point, Cast forward 15 years from now and imagine the power of 2.2 million grown-up, well-educated, healthy adults madly in love with Jesus who understand what poverty does and how it damages lives. Imagine them on fire for Jesus reaching out in their countries. Come on. Come on. If that isn't, if that isn't redemptive giving, I genuinely don't know what is. 2.2. I, it's top, my time's up. God gives us wealth. Why? So we can be generous. What's the result? It gives him glory. That is what it's all about. I'm going to exit the platform now. Please come sponsor these children. I've got a little girl up here, Ali, that I brought up here. If you want to sponsor Ali, you need to nab me quick. I try and ask Jesus to give me one that he wants me to kind of hold up from the stage. And today it's Ali's turn. I did notice Shadrach is back on the stand. Shadrach was sponsored through this church sometimes for many very good reasons. People have to drop their sponsorship, and that's fine when that happens. But he's back on the table again, which I thought was rather sweet. So we're going to watch uh, just some testimonies, some short testimonies. Thank you for what you're doing. We love you and appreciate the partnership. And let's see if we can get 14 more kids out of extreme poverty. Thank you. You told me you were proud of me. You told me to be courageous and work hard. You said to try different things and never give up. Even when I lost hope and could no longer dream, you believed in me. Back then, my family was in the depths of poverty. We didn't eat for up to four days at a time. We slept on the floor in a single room. I fell asleep to the sound of shouting and drunken fights outside. If only you knew, sponsorship changed everything. I remember the day I found out you sponsored me. I ran out into my community and told everyone how I had a friend on the other side of the planet. I would now have a chance to go to school, to know the feeling of a full stomach, and to visit a doctor. The center staff became like family, loving, and caring for me as one of their own. And receiving the opportunity to know Jesus saved us from another kind of poverty. I discovered that God has a plan and a future for me despite what my environment told me. If only you knew how much your decision that day impacted my life. You gave me the chance to dream again, hope again, and be a kid again.
mattered to me and it mattered to so many others like me. Amazing. So we've got um, the desk and our sort of little compassion stand is right behind you there. Um, if you'd like to go and sponsor a child at the end of the service, um, or even just chat to Mike and ask any questions that you might have. But we are, we're so proud um, to be in partnership with this incredible organization. And um, yeah, I just want to I guess finish the service and draw it to a close by continuing to bring it into context with everything that we've been speaking about for the past few weeks. Um, and I think it's really timely that Mike has come this week and we've been able to draw attention to this work because this is who we are with Compassion and our other mission partners. It's who we want to be as Freedom Church, a group of people that exist for the flourishing of others. You know, Tim's red bucket theology that he's been sharing with us. The idea of when the holes are in the bucket, the blessing comes in and it flows out and causes the garden um, to flourish. And compassion is just one of those holes in the bucket that we have as a church. I want to read Micah 6, chapters 6 to 8. And just listen to these words, these beautiful words of scripture. Because I think they're really relevant to what we've heard today and also just where we're going as a church. The title of the little section is, What Does the Lord Require? What does the Lord require? And the scripture says, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And then verse 8 says this, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Do justice love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. You may well have heard that verse before. It's quite a famous one. But the question that has just been jumping out at me over this last week as I've been thinking about Compassion Sunday and preparing is that question right at the beginning. With what shall I come before the Lord? What does the Lord require? And I think as this year, obviously now we're just stepping into February, as this year sort of starts to gain momentum, it's a beautiful question for each of us to ask ourselves and also to listen carefully to the answer that scripture gives us. What does the Lord require of you? As Christians, there's always probably a million good things that we could do, right? You can probably sit there right now in your own life and think of a hundred good things that you could do in your world, with your money, with your resource, but the question is not, how many good things can you think of to do? I think the question is always, what is God asking you to do? Because none of us can do all of the good things that need doing. But if we are to transfer our reliance and our dependency on God and say, actually, God, what do you require of me? That's when we as the church, the body of Christ, are going to be able to achieve something spectacular for which, as Mike was saying, none of us get the glory as individuals, but only God gets the glory. Because each of us is asking that question, what's the Lord requiring of me? And then doing that thing. The reason I love these verses in Micah is because Micah covers a really important principle. Did you notice that as he writes and he starts, he says, with what shall I come before the Lord? 
he then sort of continues to escalate all of these things that he should maybe be bringing to God. He starts with something simple, maybe just a burnt offering. Then he says, well, maybe a calf's a year old. Then he sort of says, well, the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams. Do you, do you see? He's like, maybe I need to do more. With 10,000s of rivers of oil, should I give my firstborn? He's saying, maybe I need to do more. I need to do more. How can I impress this God that I serve? But the point, of course, is we do not impress God with what we do. That's not the relationship that God asks us to have with him. When we follow Jesus, it's less about what we are doing and more about who we are becoming. God is interested in our heart and our character and everything flows from that. So as we continue to talk about being people that live by this principle of through flowology, we are not talking about constantly trying to do and do and do to impress God, to somehow please him, because that's not the message of the gospel. Instead, we are saying in Christ, we have been blessed and our response is we want to become more like him. And as we become more like him, everything else follows. God wants his people, his images to act with his nature and character, bringing his kingdom from heaven to earth and revealing himself to those who do not know him. That's why we're here. That's our mission for this year. That's what will cause flourishing for the people of Jersey and for the people far beyond Jersey as well, is when all of us decide that rather than trying to impress God, we're trying to become more like Christ. And that's where the scripture ends. And it's a simple thought, but I hope it's one that we can take away today as we consider everything that Mike has shared with us. And then also what our next week and our next month looks like in our own world and in our own spheres. The Lord desires that we become people who learn to love like he loves. The primary forms of love, justice, mercy, faithfulness. These are all the things that Micah picks up on. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. That's what our lives of through flowology are all about. That's the simplicity of it. Our lives will bear fruit, sure. But the key for us is not to be constantly thinking about the million good things we should be doing. But saying to God, what do you require of me? How can I love better as Christ has loved me? We pursue justice because God always pursues justice. We are merciful, loving kindness because God is merciful to us. We are faithful because God is faithful. Do you see the difference? Do you see what we're here to do? This is a journey of becoming. As we get into our series over these next few weeks, looking at the whole story of God, we are asking that question that Tim asked two weeks ago. Who are the characters that we are becoming in this grand story of God that we are a part of? And so this is what the Lord requires of us, to share what he has given us, to share his character, to share his love, to share his nature to everyone around us. And in each of those spheres, as I finish, I want us to just take a moment of reflection and prayer as I ask three questions of you, and they're really simple questions, one for each of those areas that Micah covers. You may remember last year, we, um, as a leadership team, we shared with you that we spent a day with the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity, LICC, and they did a training day with us on whole life discipleship, how to build a culture that is not based on one or two people in the congregation, but a congregation where everyone plays their part and where everyone realizes that they are uniquely called and gifted to make a difference in some part of the, their world as part of Jesus's church. Living a life where discipleship is not just about a Sunday, but is also about Monday to Saturday and what it looks like to live for Jesus. And they taught us, and it's just stuck with me, a really simple thing to think whenever you get together on a Sunday as God's people, as you gather as God's church, to ask the question, where are you gonna be this time tomorrow? 
TTT, <laughs> this time tomorrow. Because just for a moment in our service, it forces us to think outside of Sunday, and tomorrow at about 12 p.m., this group of people is going to be scattered across Jersey. And wherever you're going to be this time tomorrow, I just want to take a moment of reflection, as I said, and ask yourself these three questions. This time tomorrow, what does it look like for you to be doing justice? Make it simple, make it practical. Something in your workplace, something with a relationship in your life maybe, someone that you know that's struggling. What does it look like for you to be doing justice this time tomorrow? Second question, this time tomorrow, what is one way that you can show kindness to someone? This is where the rubber hits the road. It makes it practical. It's not just like these ethereal concepts that you hear from a preacher on Sunday, like, oh, yes, justice, mercy, kindness, faithfulness. What I'm encouraging you in this moment, and in a minute we'll go back into a time of worship as we conclude the service, I want you to make it real for your life. What does it look like for you to be living this life of through flowology? And you don't need to change the world tomorrow. Something small, something practical. My final question as the worship team come up and join me. This time tomorrow, what does it look like for you to just walk humbly with God? What does that look like for you tomorrow? Are you going to ignore your faith for the rest of the week until you come back next Sunday? Or tomorrow can be a day where you just take one step forward with Jesus. It might be some time in his word. It might be a short prayer during your work lunch break where you say, actually, God, give me wisdom for my afternoon at work. The reason I love the work of people like Compassion and all of the mission partners that we work with is because they take God's love and his beauty and everything about his gospel and they make it practical and say, this is actually what you can do to make an impact, a kingdom impact in the lives of others. And like I say, that's our vision as Freedom Church. We love to gather on a Sunday. We worship God together. But we want to be a people that say, we get out there. We do something. We can't do everything, but we can do something. And so maybe one of those questions stuck out to you. What does it look like for you to practically do justice tomorrow? What's one way you can show kindness to someone tomorrow? And what does it look like for you to walk humbly with God tomorrow? Just take it, reflect on it, and don't let what you've heard today stay in the room. Take it out of the room. These little things, these little moments add up. And again, that's the thing that just blew my mind just then with compassion. Maybe you just feel like, look, I just sponsor one child. Or I just wrote one letter. But when you add the, all of those little things up, look at the difference it makes. And there's a principle there, and it's a kingdom principle, and it's a godly principle, that we don't have to overwhelm, overwhelm ourselves by trying to do everything. It's what Micah says. We don't need to be sacrificing thousands of rams or 10,000 rivers of oil. We need to just do something. Take one more step towards the person that God is calling you to be. That's our challenge for this morning. It's our challenge for this week. So why don't you stand to your feet and I'm going to pray and then we're just going to spend one more moment in worship together. And I'm going to believe that God's going to speak to you as we're worshiping him and just give you some insight into everything that you've heard today. Something to take away. Something to take into your week. Heavenly Father, but we're so grateful for this conviction that you have been landing on us at the start of this year, this idea that whatever you've given to us, Lord, you want to flow through us. Lord, we want to become these people that you call us to be, Lord. We want to become 
people that do justice. We want to become people that love kindness. We want to become people that walk humbly with you. And Lord, more and more as this year starts to open up, we're, we're seeing that you're calling us to that. Each and every one of us in our own spheres, in our own families, in our own lives. And God, as we worship you now, we pray that you would just be speaking to us. Holy Spirit, pour out in this room. Challenge us, encourage us, convict us. Give us wisdom where we need wisdom, Lord. Give us comfort where we need comfort. Where we're struggling or weary, Holy Spirit, refresh our souls this morning. We're not here for the sake of it. We're here to meet with you, to gather together, to worship you. As as Mike said, Lord, as your people gather and as your people do their part, play their part, you get glory. People raise their eyes to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. And that is the impact we want to have this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your heart and me. 
Jesus by you. Well, we love that. We pray that this week it would spill out into our places. In Jesus' name. Guys, we've got an opportunity for uh, prayer in the back left corner there. Feel free to go, be prayed for. There's coffee uh, out the front. Um, I'm reliably informed. Um, you can also go uh, and speak to Mike and Diane and the guys at the back right hand corner have a phenomenal week where the presence of God is everywhere that you are okay uh, enjoy and um, and we'll see you next Sunday bless you guys cheers oh oh yeah my mistake it is a chairs away week so um, the blue ones get stacked up to 10 high the grey ones get folded and they go on a rack um, at the back there, which will get pulled out. And so please help put the chairs away. That would be really helpful to us. More work is happening this week. So um, that's exciting. <laughs>